This is the NW400 retinal camera by Topcon. This is the main screen. This is the screen that you get when you first turn it on. We're going to go through all the setup menus. That's what this is tutorials for is all the setup menus. I'm just going to check this out. I'm just going to hit setup. This is the standard setup menu. You'll get three setup menus, three pages. Pages one of three, click next, two of three, three of three. These are the, this is the standard setup page. And each one of these pages has tabs along the left hand side. This says fixation. This says fundus photo. This has illumination level. And this is flash levels. Okay, let's go back to fixation, which is where it starts out at for page one of three. Let's go to page two of three. Page two of three, you have auto alignment, all your variables there. Focus, all your variables there. Small pupil, all your variables there. Auto operation, all your variables there. Auto shoot, auto has to be on if you want it to take the picture automatically. Okay, next page. Let's go back to page three. System setting, all your variables there. One important one here if you ever move this device from where it is, always start the packing mode. It's page three of the standard setup mode, page standard setup. Page three, system setting, packing mode, you'll hit start. You do that, machine will automatically center out. I don't want to do it here because it'll take it out of my view of my camera. So it's going to sit start. It's going to automatically center and lock in place for you to go ahead and ship it out. Never ship out a camera without doing the packing mode. If you do, you risk damage, and 95% of the time, you'll get damage. You want damage? Don't hit that. You don't want any damage, hit that. Locks it all in. Never had any damage when I hit packing mode start. Okay, so that's basically it for the standard setup mode. Thanks for watching that. Next will be the advanced setup mode, where we have to enter in the serial number of the unit to get more menus. There'll be an additional two menus, and that's where you put in all of the IP stuff. Internet protocol for going on to networks. Okay, so this tutorial is for the advanced setup for the Topcon NW400 Rattle camera. Part two, the previous one was part one. This will be much more in depth as there are more menus. So, the first thing you're going to need to proceed with this is you're going to need your camera serial number, which is located on the right hand side of the camera on the very base of the unit and if you look down there you'll see the serial number this one happens to be 980278 you're going to need that because that's going to become very important in a moment last time we just clicked setup if you remember to go to the standard setup menu where you have one of three pages well this time we're going to go back and we're going to hold down the setup icon for five seconds one, two, three, four, five. Now you'll see you get the word input password. And when you import the password, guess what that is? That's that serial number at the side of the camera on the right hand side on the base. It's 980278. So we put in 980278. Click OK. Now you see, before we had one out of three down here, now we have one out of five. The first three pages are the same three pages as in part one of this video, the general setup menu. We've added two additional pages because we put in the serial number by holding down the setup icon for five seconds. We're going to go to next. That's page two, page three, 
page 4, page 5. Let's go back. Page 1. Page 2 and all the variables. Page 3. Page 4. And page 5. So the one beauty about this camera is you don't need a computer to operate it. It sends the JPEG images directly to the network any network you have to get the IT person to put on a shared folder and password for their network the shared folder is where all the images will go to so ask the IT person to create a shared folder on the network and a password for that shared folder or for the network and I'll show you where that goes in in a little bit but first thing you have to do though is assign this camera an IP address on the network so you're going to plug in the network connection on the side on the left hand side of the camera into the network connection in the pretest room where the camera is going to be that's a standard cat 5 or cat 6 cable goes directly in to their network then you have to task the IT person to give you a free IP address, one that's not being used on the network. They can all do it, they all know what you mean when you ask. You don't want to use one that's already assigned, that will cause great havoc on their network. So you have to ask them what IP address is uh, free for their system. And if we go to page 4, page 4 and page 5 are where the network settings are. Page 5 also has other settings if you're using this with the R5 ImageNet software or any other software that, might, that uses the Easy Capture software from TopCon. But we're not concerning ourselves about that in this vid video. We're only concerning ourselves about putting this on a customer's network because 95% of them, that's where they're going to go. So we're going to go back to page 4 and you want to make sure that the date and time is correct. It's important that that's correct so that all the images are stated with the correct date and time for the, um, for the date stamped with the correct date and time on each one of the images. So make sure that's correct the year, the month, the day, the hour. Notice it's military time and the minutes. Okay. It's 419. Today is October 3rd, 2016. Then you go to network. Now this is where you put in their IP address that they're going to give you that's free on the network. It's probably going to begin with 192.168.something.something. .something .something. Most likely. It can be anything. Let them tell you. The subnet mask, chances are, going to be 255.255.255.0 but ask them not necessarily this that on all networks and you may or may not need a default gateway but if they give you one go ahead and put it in there okay um, you probably will not need the DNS server you will not need a secondary DNS server and you will not need an IP address setting should always be at fixed address do not choose DHCP. DHCP, that's where the network assigns an empty one. And the camera will probably work fine until the network goes down or the camera gets turned off and it doesn't assign the DHCP, doesn't assign the same IP address again, then it won't work because the won't, camera won't know where to put the images. So always use fixed address for IP address setting. So that's basically page 4. Now let's go back to um, page 5. If 
This is where you select whether it's a standalone system, DICOM system, ImageNet system, and other parameters that you may want to put in. But for going on to a network, this is the most important thing. Configuration, standalone, DICOM, or ImageNet. I get that by hitting um, this drop down box right here. If you choose standalone, then on the standalone, this is where you're going to have to put your shared folder. It has to be set to on. If it's off, it'll never get there. It'll never get to the shared folder, shared folder that that network person has made for you. It has to be on. So you click on there. Shared folder, the name of the folder. I'll give you some samples on the next video. Okay, so we're back. And um, we're looking at page 5 of 5 where you put in the network information. So you can see here the shared folder must be on. If you turn it off, you won't be able to enter anything into these folders. You must turn it on. Then you have to put the shared folder name in. Now the shared folder name is what they're going to is what the IT person is going to give you on the network that you're installing it on. It must be the IP address first. And you're going to put in slash slash. That must go. Then you have to put in the IP address of the share uh, on the network for where the shared folder is located. So let's say the shared folder, you call it Topcon. You can call it Topcon Images, you can call it Retinal Images, you can name it anything, you can have the IT guy name it anything that you want. So let's just use Topcon as an example. So they're gonna, you have to put in the IP address first. It's not the, it's not the server name, it's not a name, it has to be an, I, an actual numerical IP address number. So I'm going to use 192.168.0.4. Then you put the slash in again. It's the only slash on the board is this one. Then you put in the name of the shared folder that he created for you. We're going to call it Topcon. Now, I don't know if uppercase, lowercase matters or not. But whatever he makes it, you have to make it the same. That way it will always work. So I, for purposes of the demonstration here, I made it Topcon. So it's slash slash the IP address of the network, 192.168.0.4, where the shared folder is located, slash the shared folder name. Then you click OK. It puts it in there. Now you have to put the username in, the shared folder username. Well, let's say that username is Topcon. It can be anything else that he tells you, but the shared folder username. We're going to put in Topcon. and click OK. Now you have to put in the password. This is the password for the shared folder. Again, the network IT person will give you this. Generally it's the one for their network, but they may make up a separate one just for this shared folder. Depends on the IT person. It also depends if it's on a domain or not. I'll talk about the domain in a second. Domain, you have to do one extra little step in order for it to work and the IT person can help you with it also. Let's say the shared poll, the shared fold password was 2020. 
type in 2020. Click OK. Okay. None of these other functions change. This doesn't change. The prefix doesn't change. The digits of the numbers don't change. None of this changes. It all maintains the same. What's going to happen is if you click, sometimes if you click verification, you will get verification OK, which means the camera is now talking to the shared folder, which is talking to the network. Everything is communicating properly. Not necessarily the case, though. I've clicked verification. Click execute. Yes, it's going to come up NG because I don't have it connected to a network here. Okay, it's going to sit there for a while. See, it says verification NG. You might get verification OK. Or good. I think it says good. Verification good. That means it's talking. You're all set to go. But I don't have this set up to a network right now, so I'm going to get NG. But you might have it all set up to the network, and you might still get NG. Sometimes, some networks need to have the camera rebooted. So, what you can do is, you can shut off the camera, turn it back on, go to setup, hold it down for five seconds, put the serial number in, go to this page 5 of 5, click verification, and if it's all talking, it's all set up properly, you'll get verification good. Then you're set to go. Okay? Now, if you're on a domain, right here where it says shared folder user, you have to put the domain name in. And it's slash slash domain, whatever the name is, I'm just going to use the word domain. But it'll be something like I care city or Dr. So and so. It could be anything that the IT guy, his name is domain. So, but you're going to put that name in there, then you're going to put a slash, and then you're going to put the folder name back on there, Topcon. That way it knows where the shared folder is. The username is going to the domain name, and then the shared folder name is Topcon. So it ha if it's on a domain, you must put in the domain name here in replace of the word or name. Whatever their domain name is must go there. Okay? And then you click OK and it will look like that. And everything should technically work. I've never had a problem. I've done 50, maybe 60, and they all work. And they work every day. Um, just to show you some other things though, um, DICOM. This is set up for a DICOM server. I've only ever done one. I've never done it. I had the DICOM guy come in from the, from the, it was a, it was a university. Actually, it was Arizona State University. Guy came in and says, we're DICOM compliant. Does your product support DICOM? I said, yes, it does. He said, he said, I'll meet you there when I come over. We'll put all, I'll put all the stuff in. He came in. He put all this in. DICOM. The DICOM server information. He put all this in. It was amazing. Put in the server 2 information. Clicked OK when it was done. We did a capture start. He did something on the computer to make sure that it was talking. He pinged it. He saw the camera on there. We took capture start on the capture, took the picture, went into their DICOM system perfectly the first time. It was unbelievable. He knew what he was doing. It's pretty complicated with all these different settings that have to be done. So that's the DICOM information. I would never be able to set it up. Well, maybe I would after 35 or 40 hours of pulling my hair out with an IT guy with a DICOM person. but. The, this guy came in and did it. They know their stuff. If they're DICOM, doing DICOM on networks, they know their stuff and they get it done. They put all this stuff in, all on them, in and it all works. So, some of the stuff I don't even understand. I understand. I know sort of what it is, but I don't really know exactly how it works. Okay.
So again, our main port is standalone, shared folder, must be the IP address, then slash the name of the folder, shared folder username, if it's on a domain, you have to put the domain in. If it's not on a domain, you can just put in the name of the shared folder user. Okay. And then the shared folder password. When you take the picture, you'll have an input screen can't show you that because I don't have a connection to a network. It's going to ask you to put in, the la put in the name of the patient. Normally we put in the last name, underscore, first name, underscore four digits. The last four digits being the record number, maybe from OfficeMate or CompuLink, or four digits as a social security number or phone number. And then it'll be named that way. So it'll be the last name. So let's say it's Smith, underscore, first name, let's say it's John, so this would say Smith underscore John, and then this would be the date, right here, underscore, it's going to bring it, if it was a color photo, which it always is, so it's going to be color, it's going to be underscore L, L or R for left or right, then it's going to be the number, 001 for the very first picture, for JPEG, for the number for the JPEG file and then .jpg for JPEG. Okay, so that was that's how it will be. It'll all be last name underscore first name underscore date underscore color underscore left or right underscore zero zero one zero zero two zero zero three and so on .jpg. That's what's going to go to the shared folder. Once it's in the shared folder, it can be viewed on any computer on the network as long as the network can see that shared folder on any computer and it can also go into any EMR by using the e-document section or the importing section for retinal cameras for any of the EMRs whether it be CompuLink, OfficeMate, NextGen, Crystal, um, any, any of them they all do the same thing. They all work. You have to bring them in but once they're in they're in the patient record forever. So that's page five of five. You will always keep this as JPEG fine, but you can have JPEG normal. TIFF, if you want the full TIFF, full five megapixel TIFF image, feel free to change it to TIFF, but you better have a lot of room on your server for it because those images are going to be very big, very large. And the DCM is for DICOM, which is one of the changes you have to change if you go into DICOM. So JPEG fine is where we keep it for our for our situation and we're not using any XML file output so we just that stays disabled basically all these down here in this section from file name down are all the defaults that come with the NW400 just as it is okay then you just click OK and it'll go back to the main screen and you'll be ready to hit capture start and if you hit capture start it's going to come up and take the picture. This is where I was talking about putting in the patient information. You click there. This is where you put it in. Um, you would put in the last name. Let's say it was Smith. Then you do underscore. Then you'd go John. Then you'd go underscore with the last four digits of the patient record okay and then you go back and you can see now that's going to be the part of the file name the JPEG name Smith underscore John underscore one two three four it's going to add the date it's going to add left and it's going to add color it's going to add left and right it's going to add the number all automatically you're going to hit capture start right here. If I do that right now, it's not connected to a network. So it's going to say it can't find anything, but I'm going to show you. You'll hit capture start. If you were connected, it would automatically see the patient. And you go ahead and go ahead and do the 
image and would automatically snap the image, move to the other side, you hit capture start again, it'll take that image and we have left and right eyes for John Smith will be sent right to the shared folder on the network. Again, I'm not connected, so that's what you're going to get. If you get this, it's not right. Something isn't talking to something. You've got to get the network guy to make sure that he can ping the camera on the network and make sure that the shared folder username and password are all correct. I'm going to click OK there and it'll go away. So basically that's all there really is for the setup menus. Let's go over these setup menus uh, again for the standard one without holding down for five seconds. It's page three pages, that's page one, and then the different selections you can take for each one of those. Let's go to page two. Again, the different selections you can take. Small pupil is off on right now. That's part of that's the default. Auto operation starting from the left eye going to the right eye, the right eye going to the left eye. You can set all these different parameters. On page three, power timeout. You can change that so if it goes into standby mode, you can choose that's 10 minutes. Of all those you have up to an hour, you can turn it off. 10 minutes is good, I think. That's the default. Display brightness is how bright you see everything on this display. Again, the most important thing on page three is the packing mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, go back to the main menu. And again, to review, you hold down this for five seconds. It's gonna ask you for the import the password, which is the serial number of the unit, which is in this case, 980278. Click OK. That's going to give you five pages worth. Okay, right there. We'll go through these, find this photo. Those are all the different choices you have there. Keep that on there for a few seconds. Illumination level flash level output. Page two. For color, there's all the different things you can have there. Color preset one, these are all the defaults. Color preset two, all the defaults. Color preset three, all the defaults. Camera IP address, the IP address that you assigned it when you assigned it on the other page, page four, page three, I'm sorry, page three, um, auto alignment, focus, small pupil, auto operation, just chin rest, those are the difference you can have, settings you can have over there. Page four, jet going over, don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, page four, again, system setting the timeout, display brightness. If you're on this mode, the packing mode is on page four when you're in the, when you're in the advanced setup mode. It's right there, packing mode. All these others are the defaults. Date and time, very important to make sure that is correct so the date is put and stated properly on every one of the JPEG images that it takes. Network, this is the IP address that you're going to have the IT guy to put the uh, unused IP in. It'll probably start with 192.168.something.something. .something .something. That's important. If you give submit and ask, ask him what it is, it's probably 255-255-2550. If he has a default gateway, he may have you put that in there. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And make sure this is on fixed address because you don't want this IP number changing on you. You want to make sure it's always constantly the same one. 
And then page five, which is the most important page, you have up here on configuration, you have standalone, DICOM, or ImageNet. ImageNet, if you're using it with ImageNet R5, it's already preset for you anyway. It all comes from the factory, from New Jersey, already set up, ready to go. But standalone's where you need to go. Click standalone. This is where you'll put in your shared folder. Network Guy is going to give you the network IP address slash shared folder name can be Topcon, can be Retina images, could be images, could be NW400, whatever you want to tell him. He's going to ask you what do you want it named. And you tell him what, what you want. The username, he'll tell you what that is. The username to get into that shared folder. And then the password to get into the shared folder these two work together. You have to have the password to get in order to get into the shared folder in order to get into the network to get the shared folder that's there. Again, if it's a domain, then you're going to put the domain in with the slash slash over here. Domain. Flash. And then the name of the shared folder. I didn't spell it right. I need an A in there. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that's if you're using a domain. Cancel that, it'll go back to the standard shared folder. Basically, that's all there is to it. You won't use DICOM, DICOM Server, DICOM Server 2, unless it's going into a university or a hospital where the DICOM network guy will be glad to put in that information. If you're lucky enough to get him, a good one, he'll work the first time. ImageNet, you won't have to worry about putting that in because that's all done for you from TopCon when you get it. And that's all you really need to know. So um, apparently this has a Canon CP6, CP900 driver in it. You can print directly from the, uh, and a Sony too, uh, or directly from this camera, but nobody does that anymore. But obviously they put in two drivers under print. There. Okay, so basically then that's all there really is to it. I hit OK, go back to the main screen, and you're back in business ready to hit Capture Start to take the images directly to the shared folder on the doctors, hospitals, universities, network, whatever they're using. It will work to a shared folder every time. Thanks for watching.